It's slide time, yo. We slide now, just like my car used to slide when I disengaged the parking brake in that spot. But I was not a, an expert driver for the first few months of, that I had my car, believe it or not. I'm sure everybody else was. Like Everybody listening right now, I'm sure you... Two days after getting your first car, you were a perfect driver and never got in any trouble. But I was not. So, if you... I don't know how much I should explain here about... That's fine. Well, we gotta come down the slide again. Anyway, because I'm not done with my story yet. This is a weird thing for me to gauge because on one hand, I realize that a lot of people... I don't know if I want to say most people, but a lot of people don't know how to drive a stick shift car, a manual transmission. Like, it's not a skill that... like a rare skill that I'm super proud of. I don't want to come, come across as that because it's really not. It's just you're driving a car and there's one extra thing you have to do. But people that I know, including my wife and I've got friends like that don't know how to drive stick, treat it like it's this weird arcane ritual. It's not, but it does require some explanation if you've never done it. Because if you've ever put your car in neutral and just sat on a hill, it'll roll down the hill, right? The difference, but the main difference between the stick shift and the automatic transmission that most people are used to driving is you can stall the stick shift. You have the, 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 a third pedal called the clutch that if you let up off the clutch and the car is not otherwise engaged, it'll stall out and you have to start it again. This is difficult when you're just trying to get the car uh, rolling. And I think we're doing... Because we got to go all the way up the mountain for a ninth time here. I think we're going to do 100 coins now. Yeah, let's do 100 coins now. So... It's a skill you have to learn, how to slip the clutch just a little bit, whether you're backing out of a parking space or pulling forward at a red light from, from any time you're having the car at a complete stop, you have this moment where if you don't operate the clutch correctly, you'll stall the car. When the car is stalled, you're not in gear at all. It'll just roll if you're on a slope. So you see my predicament. As a new driver, if I don't operate the car properly in the few seconds I'm pulling it out in reverse out of this space, then I'll stall, and then I'm on this hill that I... Like, it becomes more difficult. I don't think I need to grab any of these red coins. I'm gonna get this one. I did say that in TikTok Clock, and I, I kept regretting it, though. Are these coins? No, it's a one-man. It's a one-man that just lives on that mushroom for all the rest of time. These guys don't even give coins. What nerds. Don't push me off the level. That would be absolutely hilarious, but also very, very traumatic for me. So most days I was fine. You know, I've done a lot of practice. Uh, getting the car started without stalling. Like, I wasn't uncomfortable driving the car. Oh, I've got to go down here, actually. Into this little spot. No, that's too far down. We do have to go into that little spot, though, because that's where my my pink bob -omb guy is. That was a weird jump, Mario. I mean, good job. You got me. Usually, I would get out of school, and we would, like, hang out on campus for a little bit. I like we'd either go get a sandwich or whatever we would do. School got out real early, as I recall. We were out of school at like 2.20 in the afternoon or something, which was really early. But you didn't want to leave right away because you had this enormous line of cars backed up all across the parking lot trying to get out the exit of the parking lot trying to leave school. And it was a big cluster because like nobody, act, like this is all kids that don't, like brand new drivers. It was just a big, big mess. Open the cannon for me, nerd. I don't think we can get back up top where I just jumped from without this Shy Guy or without some crazy jump shenanigans. So we're probably just going to end up... Oh, the Shy Guy's right here, though. If I could just jump on his head... I guess we can't, though. So we would always wait 15 or 20 minutes or so. Maybe not even that long. But to have a stress-free parking space experience... 
Actually, my, at the time, my fourth period class, we were on a four period block scheduling. So my fourth period class was the end of my day. And my fourth period class was in a computer lab. And oftentimes I would hang out in the computer lab working on projects or doing homework or whatever, just for 15 or 20 minutes, just so we could watch the parking lot. The computer lab overlooked this parking lot and I could see, oh, the conga line's gone. We can easily pull out. For some reason, one day I didn't have this luxury. I had to run across a rolling log. That's the wrong way. We want to go this way, across the rolling log. Here we go. This is the stuff. Perfect. Uh, like, maybe I had something at my church that day, or I had to, I had to go home right away, for, for whatever reason it was. And, so pulling out a bunch of just, let, let's face it, asshole 16-year-old kids. Let's be, let's be realistic here. Like, nobody's gonna let you out of your space if you're in a space where I am. I had to pull, like, most of the spaces were situated in such a way that you would pull out into, like, the main parking lot and then drive to the back of the conga line to get out. My space was situated on this little hill that the conga line kind of formed directly on top of. So, for me to pull out right at the bells, I, like, somebody would have to let me out. So, one day, I'm pulling out and... Oh, I maybe have I have too many coins. If I have too many coins and the star appears on top of the slide, that's going to be a lot of fun. There's a coin right here, by the way. No, there's a one man right here. There's a coin right here. It's mine now. So I, like, somebody was going to let me out, but then they decided not to. Like, they pulled up real quick. So I had to hit my brake to stop from pulling out into his car, which caused my car to stall. So now I'm stalled out, right? And I'm trying to get the car started again. And I'm, I'm like in panic mode because I'm, what, 17 years old and I'm a new driver. I've only been driving for a couple months. So I'm stalled out on a hill <laughs> in a stick shift transmission with the entire school watching. All in their own cars pulling out. No, why did... Oh. Oh, that's just a sad thing to have happened to me. Almost as sad as this story about me hitting this guy's car. So what happened was, I have no coins now. You know, that's actually, that might actually work. So we can get all the coins on the slide, and then the star won't appear on the slide. If the star appears on the slide, you kind of have to go back to the top of the slide, and then come back down and hope for the best. So I'm on this, I'm stalled out, I'm, pa I'm in panic mode. I'm like, do I, I, do I just sit here for 20 minutes waiting for the whole conga line to leave? Like, what's, what's the plan here? Really? Really? We're gonna... Mm -hmm, that's the plan, I guess. I wasn't going fast enough to get over onto the detour area of the slide. So I'm like, okay. I'm not gonna get the, st the car started again on this hill. Like, it's not gonna happen. What I'm gonna do is wait for somebody else to let me out. Then I will just let off of my brake and roll backwards out into the conga line. And when I do this... Like, I'll, I'll now be on solid ground again, I won't be in any danger of rolling anywhere, and then I'll just take a second and miss my blue coin, get the car started, and we'll be out of here. It, it won't be any problem. So somebody's going to let me out, and I put my plan into action. Here's the problem. The car's stalled out, the engine's not running, which means I don't have power steering, and when I was seven, I didn't have any idea what power steering was. I just thought the steering wheel was the steering wheel, you know? Like, that's just how it felt. I had no experience in trying to steer the car without power steering at all. And if you've never done that, it takes an enormous amount of strength. Like, it's not a Herculean effort. You don't need to be, like, gorilla linebacker strong. But it's a lot more than just a regular steering wheel. And I wasn't prepared for it, which means I pulled out and did not steer properly and backed kind of into some other kid's car. It wasn't like a major accident, I just kind of bumped his car. And he got out of his car and he's like, what the f***, bro? And I'm like, it's still in full panic mode. But there was no damage. And yeah, that's the only time I've ever collided with somebody else's car. I had a mailbox once. Not on purpose, just like not maliciously. It just, it, like, oh, mailbox, screw that guy. Like I was, uh... No, you know, there's not even a story here. I was just backing out of a friend's driveway and wasn't paying attention and ran over their mailbox. Both of these things happened before I was 20 years old and I haven't been in a car altercation 
sense. And now, by the way, I have no difficulty getting my car started. <laughs> Even on a hill. Like, no problem at all. But, yeah, other than that... Um, we did get kicked out of a parking lot once. Because my friend was hitting things with his car. So, I had a friend back in the day. I mean, I had lots of friends. I've always had friends. Like, this is like, I had this friend, and now he's gone forever, but... We used to play D&D together, and we all had, like, night jobs. Like, we would get off work at, like, 11 or 12 or later. Uh, I missed a blue coin on the slide, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab this red one. I think we'll be fine, but... I don't think I'm gonna do the log. I think what I'm gonna do is... There are coins up this way that I'm going to need. That one went off the mountain. That one's gone. That one's not. Uh, let's kill this guy. So, he had a... I actually looked up the name of the car because... We actually just... I actually just told this story to Peanut, who had never heard it the other night. And I couldn't remember what kind of make and model the car was. So, I looked it up. He had like a 1960-something... Ford Galaxy. This thing was this just tank of a car. Back in the day, we called it the Brown Bomber. Because it was just this enormous, like, crazy gas-guzzling car that weighed 9 trillion pounds. Like, it's bigger than any car I've ever driven, personally. And so what happened is we'd all get off work at whatever time it was, 11, 12... And we go to the... It was a 24-hour grocery store. It was in Albertsons. Down the road from where my mom lived at the time. Where I lived with my mom at the time. We get uh, snacks. And then we go back to my house and we play D&D until 8 a.m. And we did this two or three nights a week, probably. So one night, there was this hurricane warning in effect. Like, our entire city is about to be blown away by a hurricane. This is troublesome news for some people, but when you, if you live where I do in Tampa Bay, you kind of learn... I don't want to say that that Gambo has somewhere to be. Like he, He's late for a job interview. Let's just let him go. I don't want to say you learn to disregard hurricane warnings, because you're always cognizant of the hurricane warnings. But, like, Tampa Bay never gets hit by hurricanes. It's really difficult for a hurricane to reach us and still be damaging, Okay. I, you know what? I'm just stubborn enough that I want this coin. Maybe I am. Wow. This is a... I guess we're not getting that coin. That coin gets away. Stuck in the wall. So yeah, it's really difficult for a hurricane to actually hit us. So when we get hurricane warnings, like most of where I live, we're not in like floodplains or something. We're not going to get flooded out. The hurricanes that do hit us, usually it's just the outer band of a much larger hurricane. Because we are separated from the Atlantic Ocean by the entire state of Florida. And a hurricane that actually develops and comes through the, uh... No, we need this, actually. We need to hit that. What star am I on? Yeah, breathtaking view from the bridge. That's what I thought. So we need to hit that and come over here. get on the bridge, and then fall down into the water. It's very rare for a hurricane to form in such a way that it like, comes through the Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico, which is what it would have to do for it to actually come around and hit us. Very, very rare. So even like the great hurricanes that you've heard of on the news that have like trashed Florida, very rarely touch us in any meaningful way. If you think of like Hurricane... Uh, Andrew, I guess we didn't actually get anything from Katrina that I recall. God, what was the recent one? Well, I, it wasn't Maria. Maria hit Puerto Rico. What was... Was it Irene? Yeah, because... Yeah, H-I-J-K-L-M. Hurricanes are named alphabetically, if you didn't know. So yeah, Harvey hit Texas, and then Irene hit us. It developed as like a cat. I think it was a category four at its strongest, but it was a category one by the time it hit us. Point is, we don't really worry about hurricanes. So the news was like, hey, 
We all worked at Home Shopping Network at the time, and we had all these televisions uh, in our call center that would like play weather alerts and stuff. So we're sitting at work, we have this hurricane warning. We're like, yeah, hurricane warning, whatever. We're not, we're not going to do anything different. But it was really windy and it was really dark, and it was uh, not raining yet. It wasn't storming yet. So we're going on our snack run, and my friend, let's just call him Grendel. Grendel's driving his Ford Galaxy. It's uh, Grendel in the front seat, and then me and my other buddy in the back seat. The grocery store we're going to is in the middle of this, uh, like, outdoor mall. Like, this big shopping plaza. We go there. It's almost 1 in the morning. There's nobody there. But they didn't do a very good job of cleaning up all their shopping carts. And Grendel's like, oh, we're going to have to teach them a lesson about shopping carts. I don't know if he actually said that, but it sounds like something he might say. Which mushroom do I want? This one? Yes, this one. Cool. So we're going to come along this little ledge here. So he's in this big old Ford Galaxy. He just starts plowing through shopping carts, like one after another. And we're in the back seat, and we just think it's funny because it kind of is. We're dumb 20 year olds. We don't know it's, it's like property damage. These shopping carts are all basically indestructible. They're the big plastic ones. Like you hit these shopping carts. He wasn't going more than 10 miles an hour, maybe, but I think we want to align the star right towards the bottom of the. Let's make sure I'm lined up on the star here. We are. We're just going to go straight up. But yeah, just plowing through shopping carts. Perfect. Hashtag nailed it. <laughs> we get bored of that after a few minutes. And then he's like, dude, watch this. And he parks in a handicapped space outside of the grocery store. Like, there's no reason for him to do this. Like I said, it's not raining yet. It's like, we're not going to get wet. We have all the spaces we could pop. He's just on this high of doing dumb 20-year-old stuff after plowing through shopping carts with his car. So he parks in the handicapped space. We go inside. We get all of our... Uh, snacks. We come out and the galaxy is surrounded by rent-a-cops. Just mall cops that patrol the uh, patrol the parking lot. Like four or five of them. They have their little golf cart out there and we're like, oh crap. <laughs> they grill us for like 20 minutes asking like all these questions. Uh, I think we gave them bogus answers, actually. Like, this. like, they wanted to know, like, where do you work? I'm like, oh, you know, I work at the porn shop down the road or something dumb. They weren't real cops, so we weren't worried about it. But one of the guys, he's like, dude, okay, I get it. There's a hurricane coming. We're all about to die. I understand the shopping carts. Like, we're not going to mess with you for that. Why did you park in the handicap space? And I told him, I don't know. Maybe Grendel is, like, emotionally handicapped, and that's why he did it. Hmm. Shoutouts to Half Frog Man who sponsored this video, and to everybody who helps make my channel possible by supporting me on Patreon.